The key to becoming a great pitcher is the understanding of who you are and how you can use that information to get more outs, fewer runs, get more victories, get more playing time. These are the things that we use. We use the diagnostic, we develop a game plan. So with all of my pitchers that I work with, lessons to college. The key to becoming a great pitcher is the understanding of who you are and how you can use that information to get more outs, fewer runs, get more victories, get more playing time. These are the things that we use. We use the diagnostic, we develop a game plan and we talk about it. Sometimes the game plan changes during the fall, changes during the season. Things come, things go, oh my goodness. This isn't working. This is working. Developing the game plan to start with, then the roadmap. So the diagnostic, this is an example. We have pitchers throw 10 of each pitch. You can see the beginners here. You might just have fastballs. You might have change up. That's fine. We want to see advanced. Do you hit your spot? Do you have break on the ball? How many times can you do that out of 10? If I'm throwing my curve ball and I throw it just outside, so it's a great location. I'm not going to get hurt with it, but it didn't break. So it didn't count. The self-diagnostic says a lot. Be that true seeker say, holy moly, I thought this was my best pitch, but maybe this is my best pitch. So I need to develop this a little bit more, utilizing it in the game and I get more swings and misses. So the diagnostic is so important. You have to know what you're working with. There's many pitchers out there that have five pitches and they're all average or below average. We get sucked into this world of, oh my gosh, so-and-so on my team has four pitches and I have two. Oh my gosh, I got to learn a new pitch. We listen to our pitching coaches who are moving us along way too fast. We haven't even mastered the pitch that they taught us before. Mastering it means we know how to use it in a game, not just we can look good in bullpen and practice but we get swings and misses in a game. That's a great pitch. So before moving on, we get a great pitch and master what we have. This diagnostic will show us what the potential is, but we also have to be able to throw that in a game. And that goes along with the roadmap, developing your game plan. Okay, so like this is a workout. Now we have our diagnostic and we say, okay, I can throw this pitch eight out of 10 times. So it's game ready. That's how I utilize that diagnostic. If we're not seven out of 10, eight out of 10 times, then it's, it's not ready for a game. We're not going to put our pitchers into a situation to be unsuccessful with it. We better dominate when there's no batter and no pressure <laughs> before we like, go for it and shoot it in a game. Then we can go along with this game plan and you can see, okay, batters one to three. They're going to throw mostly outside fastballs, four to six. We're going to move inside, add a change. We're going to take our pitches from our diagnostic and we are going to work on creating a game plan. We have to have some practice tests to figure out you're getting behind with this pitch. I have a pitcher who came to Oregon State to be an infielder, but she pitched for her high school. So we're like, you know what? Let's see what you got. We threw her into some live. She pitched in one scrimmage and I'm like, you know what? We're adjusting her game plan. We said, this pitch, your drop is a great strikeout pitch, but it's not a great first two pitches because you're getting behind in the count. You've got to be able to throw these to get ahead. And then we go with this. We're adjusting and we're figuring her out. So then we have the roadmap. The roadmap came along when my daughters started swim lessons. A lot of you parents don't really get it, don't really know, and that's okay. And some of you want to know, you just don't have experience in pitching, but you are all in. That was what our swimming experience was. Either she can swim or not, but this process, she's got to float on her back. She's got to be able to blow bubbles and do all these things. Okay. So where does my daughter stand? Every time we go to practice, I'm like, what is going on? I don't know what we need to work on because we're practicing. Does that sound similar to your pitching lessons? You're going in there and you're working on something, but as a parent, I'm like, where does my daughter stand? Is she moving along like she should? What does she need to do to earn a new pitch? 
where she can do this. It's just a lot of gray area. When we look at a pitching lesson, we look at mechanics, we look at spins and break and pitches. And so we thought we have to give parents more buy-in, more knowledge to know where their daughters stand and where their daughters are progressing. There's many pitching coaches out there that lack that communication. They show up and they're like, okay, let's go through this. Do they have this plan or this roadmap? With the roadmap, we have two parts. The first part is this mechanical foundation. It covers the pitching mechanics. And I will tell you, I am not a robotic pitching coach. If you watch the College World Series and watch these All-American pitchers, they're flawed, but they know how to freaking get it done because they have that it factor. They have the game IQ. They have the, the self IQ. Okay. So there are some non-negotiables in the pitching mechanic to keep you from injury, to allow yourself to throw hard, but to be robotic where every pitcher should look the same. No, I disagree with that. I think there's something about a pitcher's grit or if I'm throwing heavy screwballs and then we have a drop ball pitcher, we shouldn't finish the same way. But sometimes I watch the internet and I'm like, everybody's taught to finish their drag right here. You're teaching them to be robots instead of being able to finish off their pitch to get the job done, to be that all American. So mechanics, yes, they're important. I touch on them, but they're not as important. 85%, 85%. If my daughters become pitchers, they can have 85% good mechanics. I am so pleased. I do not want them to be robots. I want them to figure out how to get the job done. I want them to be strategic. I want them to hop a little bit more on the front leg because they're trying to get this pitch to drop. Every pitcher has different flexibilities, flexibilities and power and how they create power with their body movements. The second part is the pitch progression. We touched on it before. Some pitching coaches move way too fast. I've seen 10 and unders who have been working on curveballs. I'm going to just say right there that all of my friends that are pitching coaches that we've been doing it for 20 years, they would not agree with that. We don't need five pitches. We need great pitches and we need to master the pitch in a game before we should move on. If my pitcher comes back and I'm like, Hey, how is this pitch? And they're like, yeah, it worked for me some, or I didn't throw it a lot. Okay. Why are we moving on? So the roadmap is two parts. It's to look at your mechanics, to make sure we're looking good in certain areas. Then it's also this progression um, that shows, yes, I can throw this eight out of 10 times a few times in the month. Yes. I can alternate this pitch with another pitch and still master the locations. And then can I, can I throw this in a game? Do I get swings and misses? Do I find success with it? Why would we move on if we don't? Just to say you have five average crappy pitches, you're not going to stand out. I'm recruiting. And the number one thing that'll stick out with me is if when I watch that pitcher, I know who she is. The other pitching coaches around the country, that's what they want to see. They want to know who you are as a pitcher and how do you use what you have? Do you know how to get batters out? Are they making contact? There was these two pitchers that I watched last summer on the same team. One pitcher was just throwing ping pong, a little high and inside, a little low, then coming in and just all over the place, but getting hit. Then this other pitcher's coming in, throwing heavy screwballs, jamming the crap out of people. She had a decent change up. I'm like, gosh, she knows who she is. She's getting outs, really good outs, easy balls. I knew who she was. So she already beat that other pitcher in my mind. Understanding who you are as a pitcher ignites that competitive edge that helps you dominate. You want your pitcher to have confidence. She has to know who she is. The sooner you understand this, the sooner you can execute it. You can have a 10 and under pitcher that knows who she is with her fastballs, knows how to use a changeup. And you can have elite pitchers at college and most of them don't know. They have good pitches, but they still don't know how to use them. I've had a pitcher tell me, I don't get a ton of strikeouts. And I said, why? Your pitch is really good. She's like, well, I just don't know. Well, do you start your pitch here? I put my hand on the plate a little bit and then have it break off the plate. And she goes, yeah. I said, that's why you don't get strikeouts. 
batter's going to hit that. You're throwing it on the plate, teaching her at a top level how to be better, how to use her pitches to help her. She had them. She didn't know how to use them.